Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let me show you how you can move pages around in Mac Pages. So a question I often get concerning pages is somebody asking how can they move the pages in their document around. This can be confusing because there are many different ways to use pages. Somebody may use it to write one long piece of text like a novel, Another person may use it to create newsletters, and another person may use it to create reports. It's important to realize there are two modes in Pages. Pages is kind of like two apps in one. The first mode is word processing mode, and the second mode is page layout mode. And depending upon which one you're using, Pages behaves very differently. So for instance, here I am in Pages, and I'm going to create a new document. Notice that I've got lots of templates to choose from. The main one that you probably use most of the time is blank, and blank will create a new word processing document. But another one is blank layout. And this one actually creates a page layout document. When you create a word processing document, the main difference is something called the body text. We could see it here if I turn on view and then show layout. You're gonna see this big text box that's in the middle of this page. And I can just type directly into it. And I can keep typing into it what will happen is when I fill up page one, it'll automatically create page two. So for instance, I'm here at the bottom of page one and I press return to go to the next line and you can see there's no room for it here on page one. So when I do it, it creates a second page and it keeps going. The body text goes from page one to page two to page three, all the way through your document. It's how you would use a word processor if you were typing up a long report, an essay, a novel, any general word processing task. So for instance, here's an entire book inside of Pages. And if I scroll down, you can see it goes from page one to page two to page three, and it keeps going through the entire document. This is one big block of text. If I turn on show layout, you can see the body text here in the middle, and it basically links the body text from page one to page two, and then to page three, and so on. It's one long block of text going from page to page, and it will keep expanding as you add more text. So if we go over here to view and turn on page thumbnails, we'll see all the pages here. Here's page one, two, three, and we can scroll all the way through and see there are 103 pages here. We can jump to any page we want by clicking on a thumbnail here. So here's page 51. But page 51 is just the continuation of the text from page 50, and then it continues on to page 52. So if you wanted to rearrange pages, it wouldn't make any sense to actually drag the thumbnails here. If you wanted to put page 52 before page 51, you can't drag it and put it before. It just won't work. The idea is you don't use the page thumbnails on the left to drag pages around. Instead, you deal directly with the text. So let's say if I wanted to take some text, like maybe a few paragraphs here on this page, and I wanted to move it earlier, I could select it all and then click and drag it and move it up and down in the text more likely, I'm going to want to select it and then use Command X or Cut, remove it from there, move it to where I want it to be, and then Command V to paste it there. And you could do this with whole pages of text. So for instance, if I went down here to page 13, you could see this starts chapter two. Let's say I wanted to rearrange this so chapter two came after chapter three. I could start the selection here, and then I could go to the end of chapter two, which is right here. I could select it all like that. I shift click to select the whole range. And then I could cut all of chapter two. And now I could go somewhere else and then I could paste that in. By the way, if you find this video is valuable, consider joining the more than 2000 others that support MacMost at Patreon. You get exclusive content, course discounts, and more. You can read about it at macmost.com slash Patreon. A better example may be this document. In this document, if I look at the page thumbnails, you can see that each page just has one paragraph of text and a heading on it. So this could be some sort of report that is in this kind of format. And let's say you wanted to switch the second and third pages. So what you would do here is select all of, say, the third page, and then cut, then go before, the second page and paste. And now I've successfully done that. Notice here that the reason that these paragraphs are on individual pages is because 
I put a page break after each one of these. If I go to view and then show invisibles, I could see the page break right here. So it's not a standard return, which would just look like this. It is this blue line with this little page icon here showing that I inserted a page break. You can do that by using command and return or simply insert page break. And this forces the next line to start on a new page. And you can see each page is like this. So you would think since there are page breaks and each is on an individual page that you should be able to actually drag these pages around to reorder them. And in fact, you can make pages work like that, but you need to use sections, not pages. So right here, instead of this page break, I'm going to insert a section break. And when I do that, I still got that page break here. So I'm going to delete that page break. I don't need it anymore. So now I've got a section break. You can see the icon is different here. It looks like a little book. And then I'm going to do the same thing for each one of these pages. I'm going to insert a section break, which I should have done in the first place, and delete the page break, turning each one of these into a section rather than a page. So now that I've done that, my document essentially looks about the same. I just have section breaks instead of page breaks. But section breaks still work to go to the next page. So from a visual standpoint, they look the same. The difference is now that each of these pages is its own section, I can actually drag these thumbnails. I can drag this second page, which is the second section, and move it after the third section, like that. I can drag these sections around any way I want. So the key in this situation is to use sections, not pages. And the same thing here in this document. I've got multiple chapters. But what I've done is at the end of each chapter, I've put a page break and then a new heading there on the new page. Instead, what I should have done if I want to rearrange things easily is to have a section break at the end of each chapter and then delete the page break and do that for each chapter. So now that I've done that, I can drag and drop sections here. Each section is multiple pages. When I grab it and start dragging, notice the sections collapse. All the pages are grouped together. So the first section here is 12 pages, then nine, then 12, and so on. And I can drag and reorder the sections. So you can reorder sections even if they're multiple pages. Now, what about page layout? If you do create a page layout document, like the blank template here, then every time you add a new page, then each page is its separate thing. If you go and view the layout, you'll notice there's no body text. Nothing shows here. If you want to actually put text on this, you need to click the text box button there and then add text to that text box. So here's a text box that's on this page here. But no matter how much I type in this, it's not going to continue on to another page. If I wanted to, I would have to actually link the text boxes. That's a whole other thing. But if I do want to add a second page, I would use this add page button that only appears when you're working with a page layout document. Click that and now you've got a second page and you could do a third page, fourth page, as much as you want and put different elements on each page. You can put images, you can put text, whatever you want on each page. This is how things like newsletters are created in pages. You can see here the newsletter template is actually two pages here, each with different text boxes and elements in it, and they're separate from each other. If you create a new page, it just adds a blank page here at the end, and all of these are independent. When you do use page layout, since each page is independent, it acts as its own section. Notice there is no way to insert a section here in page layout mode, because a page and a section are the same thing. I can select any page I want and drag it into any position in the document. It's one page per section and completely movable. So what if you started in word processing mode like this document here, you decide, well, I really should be in page layout mode for this. What can you do? You can go to file and then convert to page layout, but you're gonna see this warning here because what converting to page layout means is that the body text is removed. It can no longer link from page to page, so the body text is just gone. Since this is all in body text, it means your document would lose all the things that you've added to it. So your best bet here is to actually start a new document, 
make a page layout, and then copy and paste text from the body text in the word processing document into text boxes in the page layout document. And then remember to use the appropriate document the next time that you want to make a similar thing. So I hope this helps you if you need to create a pages document where the contents need to be moved around and rearranged inside it. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.